Man, I am super duper hyped. Um, first off, before we get into this update content, let me give a special shout out to all the people that joined us on stream um, that were kicked it and pa were patient. Uh, appreciate you guys, man. Uh, these devs are working super duper hard to get this content out, man, and they are crushing it. Patch notes came a little bit later than expected, but nonetheless, we got them. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Listen, you might want to sit down for this too. Make sure you have something to drink because, yo, this hands down, best patch I've seen. So, Guild Wars is here, ladies and gentlemen. Guild Wars is here. Um, I'm just going to kind of briefly summarize this. We went over this in depth on stream. We're going to briefly summarize kind of the once-overs um, and then like the more important stuff we're going to get into. So, Guild Wars, uh, you got to be level 6 or higher to participate in your guild. You must have at least 20 members. So, if you're not in a guild with 20 members, get in one. Quickly. To be honest, guys, I want to give you guys some advice. Um, with the new chat system in, pl in play that we'll talk about once we get further in the notes, you guys have a prime opportunity. People are going to be recruiting like crazy. So instead of just jumping into a random guild, guild like trying to get in there quickly, screen some guilds, okay, first. Um, so you have a better chance of getting into one. Unless you guys just want to go balls to the wall and just go. That's on you. That's your prerogative. But with the 24-hour cooldown waiting period, I don't want you guys to miss out on any of these rewards. Because honestly, guys, these rewards are absolutely insane. Okay, let me say that again. Insane. I heard that. Okay. <laughs> Guild War. We're starting in um, on each server's respective time. Uh, you guys can see this. Uh, 3 a.m. for KST, 10 a.m. for UTC for Global, uh, which is basically. Uh, I don't know if that's a 10 a.m. No, yeah, it's a 10 a.m. UTC. So it's like 2 a.m. PST. Um, and then uh, so server reset time, and then 2 a.m. CST for Asia. Guild War rewards can be claimed at the end of the Guild War. So it's going to be three rewards, uh, three reward sets a week. So three three wars a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay, is War 2. Uh, Saturday is a buy, okay? It's just a day you just take off, chill, spend time with your family, ain't got to worry about nothing. Saturday is a buy period. Sunday, Monday is the last battle of the week, okay? It's going to be like this every week. Uh, so just so you guys know, this is going to be a preseason Okay, so we're, this is going to give everybody time to try stuff and play with stuff and all that other jazz. And then we'll move into Season 1 shortly after that. Okay. Guild War process, you'll form defense teams and position in the buildings uh, during the prep period. Once the war begins, attack and dismantle enemy buildings. Guild War can be initiated by tapping into the Guild War. Your guild leaders will take care of that. Uh, all guild members can adjust their defense uh, teams during the preparation period. Once the prep period is over, your teams are set in stone. Uh, the base positions, the guild captain, um, captains, so your guild leadership, can place defense teams uh, once more than, uh, excuse me, once more than 20 teams have been formed uh, with a maximum of 28 teams. Guilds must meet the following requirements during the preparation period to participate. At least 20 defense teams must be placed. Um, there must be defense team position in the stronghold, which is obviously the main building. And players may choose from uh, choose to position defense teams in defense towers in each respective fortress. Uh, however, please note that if two towers are empty or destroyed, the stronghold will be vulnerable. So think of it, for those of my mobile players out there, once your inhibitors are down, y'all know what time it is, okay? Um, so just think of it like that. So once those towers are down, your stronghold is vulnerable to attack. And once your strongholds are taken out, you lose, okay? Um... Base overview, the base is built uh, of one stronghold, three fortresses. One stronghold, three fortresses, eight buildings in each, right? So you can place defenses on each of the buildings within the towers. Once the towers are down, you guys get the idea, a total of 28 teams. Okay, so if you guys here, show some pictures. Again, you guys can check this out. Um, Guild War in progress uh, is once the war starts, and it'll let you know. And then you basically have the opportunity to look at your opponent's teams and all that other jazz you can kind of gauge. Um, like I said, it'll be nine teams in each building. Uh, this is why this helps. Or nine, eighteen, twenty. Yeah. So up to a total of twenty-eight. Um, but you basically just, excuse me, you're just gonna basically make do with what your your guild has. So attacking enemy players must destroy the enemy base by defeating the enemy defense teams. Plain enough. Um, all battles will take on a three v three format. Every attack launch will consume one guild crest. Uh, I'm assuming every single player has a total of three guild crests, as you guys can see here. Uh, so you have three opportunities to attack. 
if you lose a player in your attack, you can no longer use that player until, um, or excuse me, if you lose that unit in an attack, like let's say one of your units die, that unit is forfeit for the rest of that particular guild battle, uh, for the rest of the period of that particular guild battle. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> We've been drinking. Sorry. <laughs> it's, just, it's my first day. But no, uh, for that remainder of the guild battle, you won't be able to use it. So... Um, this is going to be really cool. Um, based on the outcome of the battle, players will inflict damage to an enemy building and receive corresponding Havoc and Conquest points. Okay, so these Havoc points, basically, uh, you have to get a certain amount of Havoc points to win and or destroy, you know, the people. Okay, uh, so, <clears throat> to my understanding. So, the structure, uh, the strongholds and fortresses are protected, um, when the Guild Wars first initiated and cannot be attacked. Stronghold, this structure will remain protected as long as more than two defense towers remain, ex uh, excuse me, excluding unoccupied buildings. Uh, the fortress itself is protected as long as the surrounding buildings in the fortress remain. Uh, the guild will result, the guild with the highest amount of havoc by the end of the war will win the victory. Okay, So, even though it says that, destroy the enemy's towers. I mean, plain and simple. Now, after the end of the guild war, players will receive mystic medals. Um, in the Guild War Lobby. This medal allows you to summon the heroes from, from Orbis, like your regular 5-star, 4-star heroes. But sometimes, it calls heroes from a different universe. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, players will receive standard rewards based on individual battle results. Guild War's result will determine the amount of additional rewards rewarded. And finally, the amount of rewards will increase depending on the guild's rank. So the higher rank your guild, the better your guild is, the better rewards you get. Okay, simple enough, right? Um, players who sign up for the guild war do not participate in any guild battles will receive standard rewards based on the guild war. Um, if you have bums in your guild, kick them out. <laughs> get active people in your guild. Uh, the guild captain is not a member of the defense team. Um, in, in a building, that member cannot participate uh, if the guild captain is not a member of the defense team in the building, that member cannot participate. Each guild member can battle up to, okay, three times a day, okay? Um, same thing I covered before. So now this is a big things here. Uh, we got some new heroes. Uh, new Moonlight Hero Specimen says and Katie Clarissa have arrived. Um, as always, I'm going to talk about these heroes in other videos. Um, just specifically dedicated to them uh, because there's quite a bit to cover about each of these individual units. Uh, but you guys can be very excited about these heroes because I, I feel like they bring a lot. Specimen says it's going to be super strong in PvP situations. Uh, Kitty Clarissa, especially being a four star, uh, she's going to be a very, very strong support. Okay, because uh, she's a mixture of a couple of things, especially being a warrior. It's going to be very interesting to see how her kit is going to be used. Okay, so that's going to be the big thing here <clears throat> when you guys look at these units. Uh, like I said, I'll talk about, there'll be separate videos that I'm going to talk specifically about them. Uh, this is just going to be a broad overview. Now, I need you guys to pay real close attention to what I'm talking about now because this is ridiculous with this change. Like all this crying that we've been doing as a community. And listen, listen. Honestly, guys, Smilegate, super creative. Shouts out to you guys. You guys are taking real good effing care of us. Because what, what I'm about to talk to you guys about right now is going to blow your minds. Okay? It's going to blow your minds. <clears throat> so, hunt updates in stage 11. Hunt difficulty and item drops have been improved and hunt stage 11 has been added. Challenge the new hunt bosses and receive great rewards. So you guys can already see the picture. You guys are like, oh my god, are those new bosses? Oh my god, oh my god. Yes. Um, difficulty updates, the defensive health of all monsters for the first battle and hunt have been decreased by 20%. Faster wave. Um, first battles with three or more monsters from stage 7 or higher now only feature two monsters. So first wave is going to be a lot faster so you can just get to that boss and knock them down quickly. So the first wave is not as tedious. Golem hunts Masi Tetsuro, the little turtle shell spin has been updated before it decreased attack. Now it just blocks recovery. Okay, so now faster waves. Um, item drop improvement. Gold amount and materials have been increased. Players now have a chance to obtain accessories in hunt. Let me say that again. Players now have a chance to obtain accessories in Hunt. You say it one more time. Players now have a chance to obtain accessories in Hunt. <laughs> All right. Now on top of that, the amount of gold and materials has been increased. Um, so with that being said, you know this could potentially solve our gold issues. Um, if not, there's something else that I want to share with you guys here in a little bit. 
Um, Skystone Covenant bookmarks Mystic Metals, the things that you summon from the Guild War stuff, those exclusive MLs, and Powder of Knowledge now all have a chance to drop in hunts, okay? So now you have a chance to get Crystals, now you have a chance to get Covenant bookmarks, now you have a chance to get Mystic Metals. Like, they're real, like, I can't, I just, I can't, all right? L there better not be a single complaint in the community at all. <laughs> Zero. Because they are taking freaking good care of us. Now, uh, more energy is consumed for the hunt stages. I'm assuming they're referring to stage 11, um, but we're just going to have to see. Uh, there's a breakdown here. Uh, oh, actually, oh, I'm just kidding. There's more energy for all the hunts. Just kidding. <laughs> we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Um, okay, just kidding. Can I take back that complaint thing? You guys are probably going to complain about energy consumption and not getting a full energy refill, but okay, that's, that's warranted. That's warranted. All right, I take back what I said. I take back what I said. You guys can get, feel free to complain about that. <laughs> all right, so the sets are still the same. Uh, this is a breakdown of everything that drops. Uh, basically, all you guys need to know is stage 10 and stage 11, okay? Stage 10, level 85 materials with all the stuff that they listed, okay? Uh, 55 to 85 equipment, four types, um, and then accessory 55 to 70. Once you get into 11, once you're able to farm 11, it's 20 energy a, a, a go. Um, Epic 70, only 70 to 85 equipment drops there, and only 70 to 85 accessory uh, drops and stage 11 whatever dungeon you're farming level 85 materials um, gold sky stone powder of knowledge covenant bookmarks mystic metals you know all that jazz and energy so now before we get into this like I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna rage uh, about this energy cost because it's pretty crazy like stage 10 is 18 energy versus 12 what it was before so there's an extra six energy a run that's like a 50% increase and then 20 energy total, uh, depending on what the energy return is, is ultimately going to determine what, how expensive or inexpensive this is going to be, okay? Um, and then also based on the drop rates of the stuff that we get, but now that it's dropping accessories too, I, I feel like it kind of works out anyway, just because you're not really wasting time going everywhere else. Now, what I'm curious about though is now that we can get accessories out of here, what's the point of doing Labyrinth? So I'm curious to see what they're going to do to still make Labyrinth, I guess, have any kind of effect in the game. Because right now, with this patch, honestly guys, I feel like Labyrinth is pretty obsolete, dude. Because it's literally going to be hunts and raid. Literally hunts and raid. Um, so I'm, like I said, I want to see what they're going to do to, to, to keep Labyrinth and or challenges. Well, challenges I think are still relevant for charms. But I'm curious to see what they're going to do to keep Labyrinth relevant, okay? So, that's 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 kind of my spin on that. Um, the moment you guys have been waiting for, Hazel is here. Now, before you guys act all crazy, um, Hazel has received a specialty change and she looks amazing. I'm absolutely going to do this. I want to talk to you guys about this kit. Um, just because it's pretty crazy. Um, actually, no. Just kidding. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a separate video just for this. Uh, there's uh, there's a bit to cover here. Uh, there were some typos and stuff that I feel like are gonna confuse some people. Um, so we will highlight the Hazel specialty change in a different video. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> like I said, we're just gonna keep this open general. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, chatting feature has been added, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, allowing you to communicate with one another, share your experiences with fellow heirs. Uh, basically, just in the top right, uh, there's the chat button that you guys can click. Um, and then when you click that, it opens up a chat. It's, you know, you got Gale channel, regular channel, whatever channel you guys are in. So now you guys can communicate, tell each other units are bad when they're not. Do whatever it is that you guys want to do. <laughs> but chat is now in the game. I really appreciate that it's optional. I thank you. <laughs> thank you, Super Creative, for making the chat optional. Uh, players can also ignore users by tapping on the, the repo and tapping ignore. Ignoring a player will stop their messages from appearing for 24 hours. Tap the bell icon in the upper right corner to turn off notifications when the chat window is closed. So that way, if you don't want to see anything, you can turn it all off. Okay? That'll be me. Mystic Summon. <laughs> Mystic Summons are now available, providing a rotating pool of heroes and artifacts uh, available for summon. If you see a hero or artifact that you want in the Mystic Summon pool, do not miss your chance to try it. Uh, so you got to reach account rank 10 to use it. Okay, so no big deal. How to use Mystic Summon has been added. Uh, players can use 50 Mystic Metals, basically the metals that you can accumulate from either Guild Wars and or farming hunts. Um, and you can use these to um, summon heroes, okay, um, of whatever the pool is. I don't know what the pool is, um, 
But this is just an example. I guess this is going to be the pool, I'm assuming. Oh my god, Shuri's in the pool? Yeah, yeah I guess I guess this is going to be the first pool. So uh, the first uh, mystery summon is going to be ML Says and ML Clarissa. Um, then we're going to have Assyria. Looks like some artifacts. Carmine, uh, Kali, Dingo, Shuri. So I might actually be able to get Shuri. <laughs> Elspeth, which I also need. Your best friend Purgis and some other three stars. But this is pretty cool how they have this set up. And then it says, uh, so the Moonlight Heroes take 38 days until they change. Um, it looks like the normal hero and artifact refreshes every four days. Okay, so it's actually not bad. It's four heroes on rotation. So, uh, let's see, four heroes. Four days of rotation for the regular, for the standards. And then, um, so it looks like one five star, four four stars, some artifacts, and four three stars, and other three star artifacts. So, so it's not bad. Decent pool. Uh, Mystic Medals can be obtained from Guild Wars as well. And then, of course, this is another big thing. Friendship Summon Improvements. Okay? Penguins, two-star penguins, and Mega Phantasmas can now be obtained from Friendship Summons. So, for those of you guys, if you guys are like me, sitting on like 40k friendship points, I think I'm at like 32.5 or something like right now, um, you literally can just cash all that in, and now you can summon uh, penguins and phantasmas to make your six-star life easier. This is a huge, huge quality of life improvement here, guys. Uh, so this is something big that I'm sure a lot of you guys can appreciate. Um, they got some other bugs, uh, some improvements and, and bug fixes um, with some stuff that you guys can definitely come in and you know look at on your own. Um, they're also including uh, a bunch of different stuff. There's some new packs uh, that I'll post you know for the links and stuff that you guys can see the new packs. The Mulligora uh, challenges coming back. Um, and there's just some other stuff that I'll post for you guys to check out on your own. But all in all, I'm super duper excited about this patch. I don't know if I'm excited about this energy cost increase just yet. Especially, like, since we only get, you know, 60 energy. So it's like three runs. <laughs> for either 10, you know what I mean? It's, it's three runs instead of five now. Uh, but like I said, in order for me to judge this, I'm going to have to farm it and see uh, what we're talking about, you know, to, to, to measure whether or not uh it's 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 a big deal or not you know what i'm saying so we'll just have to see so with that being said guys uh like i said i'll post all these links to all of this stuff below uh so you guys have access to to access all this information and do what you will with it um hope you guys are excited about this as i am this is pretty crazy uh with the energy cost i think that they'll have to eventually give us free ref uh, full refills because honestly guys 60 energy three runs like that's ridiculous okay so but other than that Love y'all. I'll see you guys in the next few videos where we highlight the other three uh, heroes that are coming out. So we'll talk specifically about those and kind of clear up uh, maybe a little bit of confusion or curiosity that you guys may have for them. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.